welcome back to this how-to series for Psycho Experience Commerce. My name's Rob Earl, and in this video we're going to be looking at how you can view and manage the different orders that have been placed on your system. But before we take a look at how the orders are managed using the tools, I just want to go through the order lifecycle and briefly cover each of the different states that an order can live in. It starts off in the pending state. This is what happens when a cart is converted into an order the user has received a confirmation message, but no actual processing has begun. Next, the pending orders minion will pick this up out of the queue, perform its various processing actions, and move it over into the released state. It then stays in the release state for a short period before the released order minion picks it up, performs its actions, and then it'll be moved over into the completed state. That's now a completed, fully fulfilled order but there are a few other states that I probably should mention. If anything goes wrong when the pending order minions processing the order or the released order minions processing the order, the order will end up in a problem state. This will be highlighted in the business tools and it'll allow for a customer service representative to go and view the order and see what the issue could be. An order can also be placed on hold. This allows a customer service representative to go into the business tools and basically stop the processing of an order. This is really useful if someone places an order, realizes they've made a mistake and quickly dials your call center. It allows the customer service rep to instantly stop the order processing, rectify any mistakes the customers had, and then return it back into the normal flow. The final state it can end up in is awaiting availability. This is used when not all of the items that are in the order are currently available to be shipped. For example, if it's a pre-release item, in that case, the order will sit in the awaiting availability status until all of the items are available and ready to be shipped, and then it will drop back into the standard flow. So let's go and take a look at how this looks in the actual business tools. And we're going to use the main nav on the left to jump into the orders section. Once you load this up, you'll see you get a summary panel at the top. This lists the amount of orders on the site, and also the amount you have in each of the different states that I mentioned previously. We also have the action button on the right, and that's what we use to view the actual individual orders. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to view all the orders that have been placed on this instance. Now this gives you a list of all the orders regardless of status. Here you can see various different details. You can see the confirmation order ID. You can see the status it's currently in. The date the order was created. You can see the shop it was created in, and that's really useful for if you have multiple shops running in the same instance. You can see the ID for the customer who placed the order, and also the customer's email. And finally, you can see the currency it was ordered in, and also the language. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into this first one. This is an order that went through the order status lifecycle I just described. And if you look at the summary panel at the top, here you get all the database information, so the database ID and its entity version. The details panel up next shows things like the order confirmation number, when it was created and when it was last updated. Note that each time an order moves through to a different status, its updated date will refresh. We have its order status, the shop it was placed on, the email address of the customer who ordered it, and also some information about the totals. But if we start to move down, we can see what other information there is. Next we have the payment section, and this gives us all the payment information for this order. So here we can see the amount, we can see the card type, we can see the card number which has been obfuscated, and we can see some expiration details, and also the payment details. If we keep moving down, the next section we have is the fulfillment section. This is where the shipping details will be found. So here you can see the shipping address that was entered for this order. If we keep going, we can see the shipments data, which is when the uh, actual items are expected to ship and the amount they were charged for shipping. We can see some messages, in this case, that a promotion was applied on this order, and it gives us the promotion details. In this case, they got a free shipping promotion. In the next section, we can see the adjustments, and these are the different changes that are made to the cart subtotal. So if we walk through here, the first line is the fulfillment cost. $15, as was mentioned previously. But then we have our discount, the free cart shipping action. 
So that's negated. So then we have a reduction in $15. Finally, at the bottom, we have our tax block charging $23. If we keep going, the last two sections we have are the line items. And this basically lists out all of the products individually that were purchased in this order. In this case, there was only one product, a set of speakers, and a quantity of only one. But if there was more than one product that was purchased, you would see multiple lines here. And finally, you see the sales activity. A sales activity represents a single charge to the card. In this case, they made a single payment and it was settled. And you can see the activity amount, which is the total amount that was paid. Note that if a refund happens on this order, you could also see a negative sales activity for the amount that was then refunded back to the card. So let's take a look at another order. We can use the back button on the left to return to the orders page. And this time I'm going to choose the third order in the list. And this one's still in the pending state. Once more, we get a lot of similar data as before. We can see we have the summary and details sections. But if you notice the status column here, it's still set to pending, meaning this order has only been placed recently and the pending orders minion hasn't picked it up yet. We can move down. We can see the payments there and ready to be charged. We can see the fulfillment details we entered. We have a shipping address ready for the items to be posted out. Once more, the same free shipping promotion has been applied and we can see a similar set of adjustments to what we saw previously. And the line items are at the bottom. Here you can see the quantity is four this time, meaning they've bought four instances of the same item. What you'll probably notice though, is that there's no sales activity section at the bottom. And that is because the sales activity is generated by the order processing steps. Because this order hasn't begun processing yet, there is no sales activity. The card hasn't actually been charged yet. So that's why that isn't displayed. I mentioned before that it's possible for a customer service representative to also place an order on hold. And because this is still in the pending state, we have that ability. So if we move back to the top, you'll see you have the drop arrow on the right and that allows you to interact with this order. We can click on that and we can use the hold order button. You get a confirmation dialogue, just checking you want to do that. And then you can use the blue tick to confirm. Now we can see that the order has been placed on hold and its status column has been updated to reflect that. That means that no minions will pick this order up and attempt to process its data and it'll stay exactly as it is, allowing the customer service rep to speak to the customer, make any changes they may want to do. So once those changes have been made, the customer is then happy for the order to proceed. You once more use the menu on the right. This time we're going to choose commit on hold order. Once more, you get a confirmation dialog. And that returns the order back into the pending state, ready to be picked up by the minions. Hopefully that's given you a good walkthrough of how you can view the different order information that's logged into Sitecore Experience Commerce and how your customer service representatives can interact with those orders to make sure your customers get a really smooth experience with the store. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to watch the rest of the series.